As a boy, Blake Langerman attended St. Sybil's Catholic School with Lynn and Jessica Gray, with whom he was very close. Blake has multiple flashbacks of his childhood, in particular, a memory of him playing hide-and-seek with Jessica after school, where they are surprised by Father Loudermulch, and Blake is forced to leave, while Jessica is, under quotes, lectured. Blake returns upon hearing her screams and finds her bloody, mangled corpse on the stairs, with her neck broken. It's implied that Loudermulch killed Jessica and forced Blake to remain silent about it and help him cover it up, crippling him with guilt for the rest of his life. Decades later, Blake became a cameraman working with his journalist wife, Lynn. The couple has been investigating the murder of a young, pregnant woman who hasn't yet been identified. The investigation of the unknown victim ends with the couple wrecking their helicopter in the Supai region of Arizona's Sonoran Desert. Blake is separated from Lynn and must find his way back to her, all the while delving into a town in a rural area where the residents are concerned that the end of days is, at last, upon them. While seeking Lynn, Blake finds the helicopter pilot skinned, disemboweled, and tied to a tree branch, which hints at the danger they are facing. A group of hostile villagers attacks Blake and attempts to kill him before he can reunite with his wife. Lynn has, in the meantime, become entangled with the self-identified prophet Sullivan Noth, who insists that Lynn is carrying Blake's child and describes him as the Antichrist. This propels a citywide manhunt to track down Lynn and kill her before the child is born. The resulting confrontation between the two cults, one with Christian beliefs and the other with satanic inclinations, ends with Lynn kidnapped and Blake left to find her, followed by further investigation of Temple Gate. It turns out that the slain, pregnant woman was the daughter of Ethan, a follower of Noth, who was violated and knocked up by the preacher. Ethan graciously takes Blake in, claiming he is too traumatized by the horrors of Temple Gate to continue following his faith, but he's killed within hours of Blake's rest by Marta, who is Noth's enforcer. Blake is then chased through the city until he arrives at Temple Gate's main shrine, where he spies on the gruesome questioning of two heretics who finally confess to Noth that Lynn is being kept in the mines, a scene that gives Blake a new target. On his way there, Blake falls off a bridge and gets kidnapped by a dwarven archer named Laird and his companion named Nick, both of whom are leaders of the Scald Outcasts. Blake is then anointed as the Scalded Messiah, and Laird insists on rebirthing Blake through crucifixion and live burial. Against all odds, Blake escapes both dangers and flees the forest. By this point, his childhood delusions have become incredibly vivid, even nightmarish and more intense, and at the end, Blake has been driven completely insane by his guilt over Jessica's fate. Nevertheless, he presses on and finally arrives at an elevator that leads him to the mines where the heretics are keeping Lynn with them. Pursued by the heretics and their leader Val through the caverns, Blake finally encounters Lynn, who is in the last months of her pregnancy, only to be caught in a sickening orgy of blood that is interrupted by the testament. He kills the heretics and chases the Langermans out of the mines amid a thunderstorm. They take shelter in the chapel, where Lynn gives birth to their child and promptly dies of shock. Blake bursts into tears and faints with the infant in his arms, waking up to Noth announcing that he has had the entire town killed due to his failure to stop the birth and begs Blake to kill the child before slitting his own throat. Blake, with his baby in a swathe, walks through the horrific, war-torn remains of Temple Gate when the sun appears and engulfs the entire planet, just as Noth had predicted in the birth of the Antichrist. The apocalypse Blake had witnessed, as well as the nightmarish recollections of his childhood, were just hallucinations produced by the Murkoff Corporation's local radio towers. Hours after the Temple Gate slaughter, Pauline Glick and other Murkoff agents begin their research on the fallout. Two agents in hazmat suits uncover a man still breathing, albeit in a catatonic state, and pull him out of a small shed. Pauline soon realizes that the man is, in fact, Blake, and immediately orders the agents to take him to a Murkoff black site known as the Elridge facility for a barbaric interrogation. Before the story finally ends, it's clearly pointed out Lynn's son is nowhere to be seen.